Now, as England prepare for their European Championship qualifier against Switzerland in Basel tonight, the under-21 side have been playing a little closer to home, in Colchester, in fact. Yes, it's a big coup for the U's and their new £14 million stadium, which opened in 2008. Jim Rice is there for us now on a successful afternoon for England, Jim. Yes, indeed, Victoria. It's not exactly Wembley, I think it's fair to say, in terms of the capacity, nor even is it the San Jakob Park Stadium in Basel, where England's senior team will be playing Switzerland later on this evening. But it really is a measure of what the big wigs at the FA think of the Western Homes Community Stadium here at Colchester. But they've chosen it for its first ever England Under-21 International. Uh, the game itself finished about half an hour ago. Uh, and finished in a 3-0 win for England, you'll be pleased to hear. More on that in just a second. But it is, of course, a very big day for Colchester itself. Uh, just yesterday, members of the Colchester garrison soldiers there were training with the under-21 stars, and uh, all members of the armed forces today have been let into the stadium for free. There's also been plenty of kids around the stadium, which, uh, considering the school summer holidays ended just a couple of days ago, suggests there may well have been a few spurious doctors and dentists notes going around the Colchester area today, I reckon. Uh, talk about the game in just a second, but uh, it's been a big day for the club as well, for Colchester United. And earlier on I spoke to a very proud general manager of the club, Tim Waddington. It's great prestige. I had an email from a, a customer this morning who said how proud they were to be associated with the club. But you know, for us, it's, it's a real big draw. You know, we were a small club, we're a growing club, we're very aspirational. And this is the sort of thing that's a, the pinnacle of our dreams. Could you have imagined this happening at Lair Road? I don't think it would have happened at Lair Road. No, I'm not entirely sure we could have catered for quite so many people. So, onto the game itself, and as I mentioned just a second ago, a 3-0 win for England. Uh, goals coming from Danny Welbeck after about an hour, playing against Lithuania in a game they had to win England uh, to try and make it through to the European Championships. Welbeck scoring after an hour, and uh, followed in by a second goal by Mark Albrighton, and Danny Welbeck getting his second and England's third just before the end of the game to send the fans home happy. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. Uh, they started off a bit slow, but you know, the second half they picked it up and started scoring the goals, which was good to see. Everyone's so used to Cole U being there, it's, it makes a change for like seeing like England under 21s here. So, yeah. I thought it was excellent, and England played very well. And who was your favourite player? Um, Jack Wilshire. It was really good. Um, there were quite a bit misses, but it was quite a good game. Well, the sun's just this second come out here at the Western Homes Community uh, Stadium. A good day for Colchester, a good day for the under-21s, and fingers crossed England's senior team can make it the hat-trick when they take on Switzerland later on this evening. Exactly. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, that would be good, Great it? to have that in Colchester. Yeah, terrific to see, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Now, 70 years ago today, London became the target of Hitler's bombers as they began their blitz on the capital. A remembrance service was held earlier at St Paul's Cathedral to mark the anniversary and to honour those who protected the city. Well, parts of our region, of course, also suffered from bombings throughout the war. More than 300 people were killed in Norwich alone. Well, we want to hear your stories as well. Perhaps you were an evacuee or you remember the terrifying moments that the bombs actually dropped from the skies. Yes, you can get in touch by writing to us at Anglia House Norwich, NR1 3JG, or by emailing us at jonathanandbecky at itv.com. We look forward to hearing all those memories from you. We certainly do. Now then, what's thought to be the biggest colony of Natura's bats in the country are roosting in a church in Norfolk? How lovely, you might think. Mm. But the smell and mess of the 260 Look. mammals is driving the congregation so batty they've called in the bishop. Natalie Gray reports. There are 13 bats to every member of the congregation of this medieval church in Norfolk. It's an amazing spectacle, as these infrared pictures show. But visit St Andrew's Church at Holmhale near Swatham and you'll almost be knocked over by the stench. As soon as you walk in the door, the pungent smell hits you. The floor is covered in bat feces. Bibles are covered in bat urine. And the air is thick with ammonia. So thick, you can almost taste it. It's foul. Cute they may be, but these Natteras bats have cost the church £2,500 so far in cleaning costs. And because they're protected, there's not a thing they can do about it. All our pews, lights, brassware is 
pitted with acid from the bat's urine and, uh, and the feces, and, um, and everything becomes so caked, absolutely caked, in, in, in filth. It does appear that the bats have more rights than the worshipping community, and, uh, and that simply isn't fair and it isn't right. Some time ago, the PCC did decide uh, that unless we could find a sensible way forward, we were, in fact, prepared to close the church and walk away and worship somewhere else. That would be terribly, terribly sad because this church is important to a lot of people. They've even called in the Bishop of Norwich. Uh, it's very difficult for large bat colonies and human beings um, to exist uh, alongside each other. And often our churches are treated um, by regulations and by the law as, as if they are barns, but they're not. They're the, they're the house of God, they're the place where people gather. And one of the things we need to do is to address this issue, not to harm the bats, but to see whether they can be relocated elsewhere. The Church Buildings Council is so concerned it's trying to find a solution with Natural England. One answer, perhaps, to entice the bats out of the church and into special bat boxes nearby. But with the population of this colony ever rising, it looks like the bats will take some persuading. Natalie Gray, Anglian News, Holm Hale in Norfolk. Dear, oh dear. That's awful, isn't it? it? Is. Natalie's description is so vivid, it makes you want to have a shower <laughs> after that, doesn't it? Maybe the bats are so taken with the sermons, that must be <laughs> it. They love it so much. Right, finally, it's just a few days before our last visit of the summer to the Angley Rock. Where did all that time go? Oh, it started in April, goodness knows. Blown by. Now, the last time we were there, you may remember that Natalie Gray, who you just saw in that previous report, had found them. Um, mm. Seven fingered yep. carrots, yes. It was a fine example of a multifaceted well, bit of root veg. There. But you won't be surprised to know that another viewer has gone one better. Yeah, now that actually is a nine fingered carrot. Just count them while we go through this. It's David Cole from Felixstowe who sent in this picture of his nine fingered carrot. He actually dug it up from his allotment in Felixstowe. It looks like it's keeping its fingers crossed there, that it might be the record holder for the East. But of course, perhaps you know better, and I'm sure if you do, you'll be sending it in to us to show us. <laughs> yes, don't miss Friday's programme when, as Jonathan said, it's the final Angley allotment of the series. Yeah, I know. I was quite oh. sad about that. We're going to have our very own allotment party down there as well. Of course, you're invited to join in from the comfort of your armchair. As I say, that's this Friday. It's from our very last visit to the Angley allotment. All the usual stars who have been joining us throughout the, the whole series so far will be down there as well. We're going to be hearing from Alan Titchmarsh as well. He's been doing his little Titchmarsh tips throughout the series. He'll be there as well to give us a little, a little final goodbye. And is Jean going to make you a cake? Always does, it, without <laughs> fail. I've got, that's another reason we're stopping, really. These trousers are hardly going to fit me. Okay. <laughs> Before we get carried away with such frivolity, here's a look ahead to the rest of your news hour. Yep, that's just coming up with the national team in a few minutes from now. Yeah, you're slowly getting back into the weather, aren't you? Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's dry, it's been dry, but tomorrow it's going to be wet I for you. I think I need an umbrella. OK, here's Amanda with the report. <laughs> Just time for another quick reminder that if you have got any Blitz stories, do get them in to us. It's Jonathan and Becky at ITV.com. Jonathan and Becky at ITV.com. We look forward to receiving those. Yes, you do want to hear your memories. Well, that's all from us. Thank you for joining us and have a very lovely evening. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.